Hey everyone, I'm out here in the garage and what we're going to be doing today is continuing to diagnose the 2008 Acura MDX's engine issues. So stay tuned. So if you're new to the channel, I just want to welcome you here and hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you like what you see. Also, check out Car Apprentice on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I post lots of pictures and videos on those platforms before I post anything on YouTube. And occasionally I'll post things on those platforms I don't post on YouTube. Also, check out the website at carapprentice.com. And don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. So in the last video, we did a compression test on the 2008 Acura MDX's engine, and we found that cylinder number four was low on compression at 75 PSI. So we're going to take that a little step further and try to figure out where that compression is going. So let's get into it. All right, so while a compression test is good for checking the general health of an engine, a leak down test can really help us find where we're losing compression and possibly help us identify the failing component. The tool of choice is, well, a leak down tester. We're going to use this homemade leak down tester I made a few years ago based on a YouTube video. This tester is made up of two halves. The first half receives and controls the air supply from my air compressor using a regulator. The male fitting was filled with epoxy then I drilled a 1 seconds hole through the center to create an orifice. The second half of the tester also has a gauge and will connect it to a valve holder hose that looks similar to the compression tester hose we used, but it has no Schrader valve. We're expecting that the incoming 100 PSI and the air pressure in the cylinder measured by the second half's gauge will be the same. All the spark plugs should be installed except in the cylinder currently under test. Also I'm doing this test on a cold engine, but all data says it should be performed warm so the rings have a chance to seal. See the All Data Leak Down Test Procedure link in the description for more information, which includes how to interpret the findings. We need to access the crankshaft bolt, which is on the passenger side of the car. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to jack up the car, then remove the passenger side wheel. I also remove the driver's side wheel so the car can sit closer to the ground. We're going to start with cylinder number four since it's the bad cylinder and it's in the front. 
We need to get the number four piston to top dead center on the compression stroke so the intake and exhaust valves are closed, creating a sealed chamber. I placed a five inch balloon over the end of the holder hose and screwed it into the cylinder. This is a trick that many have used to identify the compression stroke. As the air is compressed, it will have nowhere else to go but into the balloon. What's tough here is that cylinder number four has low compression, so we'll have to pay close attention to the balloon. I'll turn the crankshaft clockwise with a 19mm socket on a ratchet. I see the balloon is starting to inflate so I'll stop. Next, I'll remove the hose from the cylinder and insert this 14 gauge electrical wire that's roughly 12 inches long until it touches the top of the piston. Then I'll slowly turn the crankshaft until I see the wire rise and peak at top dead center. All right, the tester's regulator is set to zero. I connected the valve holder hose to the second half of the tester. Then the air compressor hose gets connected to the first half. I slowly turn up the pressure at the tester's regulator until it reaches 100 PSI. And we have no pressure registering on the second gauge. Basically, cylinder number four has no measurable seal, so we'll have to find where the air is escaping. First, we'll remove the oil filler cap to see if we hear air escaping past the piston rings. Nope, nothing noticeable there. I'll hold open the throttle valve to see if we have a leaking intake valve. Nope. To check for an exhaust leak, I walk to the back of the car to listen for air escaping out the tailpipe. Not hearing anything, really. Let's go to this side. Not really hearing anything there. Since that test was inconclusive, we'll try a more visual test. We're going to use yet another homemade device I made several years ago based on a YouTube video. It's a smoke machine made using a paint can. This device has an output hose and I added a tip from a tube of caulk. Also it has a regulator so we can feed air into the can to blow the smoke through the hose. I placed a piece of flagstone from a yard in the can on which this ceramic dish will sit to hold an incense cone. I'll light the incense, put it inside the can, and close the lid. Once the air is supplied at around 5 psi, the clear hose end will feed smoke into the valve holder hose in cylinder number 4. I had to repeat this process a couple times because the incense burned out before I could find the smoke. Okay, so we're going to check for smoke out the exhaust here. 
I am not seeing anything at all. To quickly push the smoke through the car, I turned down the air pressure at the compressor and temporarily attached the air compressor line directly to the valve holder hose. Just connect the air to here. Okay, put the smoke back on now. There we go. To cut to the chase, as they say, I notice smoke coming out the tailpipe. So it looks like one or both exhaust valves in cylinder number four are leaking. I wanted to look inside the cylinders to determine how to proceed. If the cylinder walls are in bad shape, there's no use in tearing the engine apart and I'll just have to replace the whole engine. Engine replacement might be more expedient, but it will also be more costly. I'm trying to keep this job as cheap as possible so my time will be the trade-off. I borrowed a bore scope from AutoZone that had less than optimal picture quality and viewing angles. So I broke down and purchased this bore scope on Amazon that had high marks. The end of the scope's cable articulates, so I should be able to look back up the cylinder to assess the valves. I may do a review on this scope at some point. To perform the check with the bore scope, I turned the crankshaft so the number four piston was at bottom dead center. Here's how the cylinder looked. As expected, there's carbon buildup on the piston, but the cylinder walls appear to be in decent shape. And there are the toasty exhaust valves. We'll move on to the rest of the cylinders. Cylinder number 5 has a little bit of scuffing near the bottom, but it's in overall decent shape. I was surprised to see that the exhaust valves in this cylinder were also showing signs of failure. After seeing cylinder number 5's exhaust valves, I followed up with a leak down test on that cylinder. Alright, so as you can see here, we've got 50% leak down. So this one number here is 100, this number here is 50. 
Now, I am doing this with the engine cold, so that could be a factor, but that's still a big number. I can hear quite a bit of air coming out of the oil filler cap when I take that off. I don't hear anything at the intake or at the exhaust. Here are the leak down numbers on the other cylinders. I could hear air escaping in all cylinders when I remove the oil filler cap, so we may have some piston ring sealing issues. All right, so there you have it. There's a further diagnosis on the 2008 Acura MDX's engine issues. So we found that cylinder number four has bad exhaust valves and cylinder number five surprisingly also has bad exhaust valves. And in cylinder number six, which is on that same bank, that actually is in pretty good shape. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. So I did make a post on the MDXers forum just to ask some questions. And then I got some pretty good responses that I'm gonna sift through and see if any of those make sense in our situation here. So hopefully this information was helpful and thanks for watching.